Pokemon, it's one of the best-selling franchises in gaming history, with over 200 million copies sold since Pokemon Red and Green launched in Japan on February the 26th, 1996. Along with Mario, it's become one of Nintendo's flagship franchises. Nintendo feared the games would not fare well overseas, but how wrong they were. While other 90s trends like pogs and boy bands with silly outfits and ridiculous hair have faded into oblivion, Pokemon has become a long-lasting, worldwide sensation. It has been over 20 years since the games were launched in Japan and over 19 years since the games were launched in the United States. But the series shows no signs of slowing down, with the excellent Pokemon Sun and Moon being released in November 2016 to worldwide acclaim. You have to admire that sort of longevity. And it's not just the games. Pokemon trading cards, Pokemon toys, Pokemon stuffed animals is a marketer's dream. And let's not for forget about the impossibly, laughably long-running Pokemon anime now closing in on over a thousand episodes. Think about that. If you wanted to watch the entire series from start to finish without stopping, it would take you about three straight weeks, and that's without taking time to eat, and bathe, and sleep. You know, little things like that. So what is the appeal of the series? How has it been able to maintain a high level of popularity throughout a consistently shifting gaming landscape with limited changes to its basic formula? To find out, we must go back to the origins of the series. Red and Green were the first games in Japan. Later, an updated Blue version was released. When the games were brought out of Japan, they were released as Red and Blue, and they used the script and graphics of the Japanese Blue, but the distribution of Pokémon was the same as it was in the Japanese Red and Green, respectively. Got that? When the first games launched, the now quaint idea of 150 creatures you could train and battle with was revolutionary. There was nothing like it on the market. If you wanted to train your starter up to level 100 and use it to rampage through the game like a wrecking ball, you could. If you wanted to train three Raticates and use the Squirtle you started with as an HM slave, you could. You had a lot of choices. That, that's what gamers yearn for. Choice. Skyrim, Fallout, Breath of the Wild. These games are great because they offer players vast worlds to explore and unlimited options in those worlds. The player can force their own route through the game, then pick it up a month later and play through it again and have a completely new experience. To state the obvious, Pokemon Red and Blue do not offer players that level of flexibility, but they are more open than later games in the series. They're adventures, not merely paths. There is a reason bagged check gates, a formality in the later games, exist. You can access them early on before you even have any badges. You have to earn the badges and return later, which brings with it this feeling of accomplishment. They turned you away before, but not anymore. You fought hard for those badges, and it's paid off. You can go to Victory Road and challenge the Pokemon League for the chance to become the champion. If you want to get the Saffron and Fusa City badges before the Celadon City badge, you can. That's the power of choice. It's liberating. Compared to the later games, there's less of a structure, less of a narrative. From the middle of the game, you're not pushed in any particular direction. You're free to go where you want, do what you want, explore routes and regions because you come across them and think they're interesting. There's nothing wrong with structured games, and Pokemon Black and White, their sequels, and Pokemon Sun and Moon use their structure to tell heartfelt, interesting stories with multi-dimensional characters. But series creator Satoshi Tajiri wanted to create a game that brought contemporary children the same joy he had collecting bugs as a child in 1970s Japan, and these original games come the closest to fulfilling that vision. There's no end goal in insect collects, and no achievement unlocked when you find a thousand bugs. The joy is in the exploration, in the finding new areas and expanding your collection. The greatest and most freeing aspects of these games, however, are those that were transferred to the next games that came to define the series, the catching and trading and training. Who hasn't felt pride when you check your party at the end of an adventure and see that the adorable little creature you picked out at the professor's lab when you started your journey is now a high-level, majestic force of power and awe? And who hasn't shown off a newly caught shiny every chance you get? This is what Pokemon is about. 
building your adventure. Your Pokemon all have move pools you can customize to your preferences and your playstyle. You can only have six in your party, but you can catch as many as you want. If you're facing a gym leader that uses water types, you could look through your PC for grass and electric types, or you could stock up on potions and go at them with a team full of fire types. It's your choice. If you come across a Pokemon you like on your travels and want to catch five of them, you can. It's your choice. They won't have the same stats and you can customize them further, giving them different names and teaching them different moves. If you have the want and the wherewithal, you can do it. The world of Pokemon is undeniably an idealistic one, and Red and Blue, you, a preteen child, can become a renowned trainer and take down Team Rocket, a criminal syndicate. You can design your future. We see the technology is incredible guy who appears in all future generations. This is the generation with Ditto, a Pokemon that freely changes its appearance. This is the generation with Eevee, a Pokemon that could evolve into three different species depending on what stone is used on it. A Pokemon that can now evolve into eight different species. This is the generation with Mewtwo, a Pokemon created through genetic engineering. Your hometown is named Pallet. That seems weird at first, but let's look at the names of the towns you visit. Viridian City, Pewter City, Lavender Town, Cinnabar Island. They're all named after colors. You start your journey with a blank palette, and as you progress through your journey, you add colors. By the end, as you challenge the Pokemon League, your palette is a rainbow of color, reflecting the fact that you have built your entire journey one color at a time, one city at a time, one Pokemon at a time, one battle at a time. Because you have chosen the shape your Pokemon journey has taken, you have a more intimate, personal connection with it. And it doesn't end when you defeat the Pokemon League and enter the Hall of Fame. You wake up in your room and are free to catch, trade, and battle to your heart's content. Where does your Pokemon journey go? Wherever you want it to. Adios, comrades. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to donate to my Patreon so I can produce more amazing content. Also, like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. See you next time!